What's up everybody and welcome back to another video from the Scalar Learning Channel and today we are talking about, in my opinion, the best math game and I mean not just a board game but game overall. I think it's a phenomenal game, it's incredible and this game is called Prime Climb. So today I'm going to show you what this game is about, how to play it and you will certainly see why it's such an incredibly fun game as well as productive in terms of working on your arithmetic skills. So a couple things at the start I'm going to show you is that this game is comprised of numbers 1 through 101. And what you'll first notice is that certain numbers are red. These numbers in red are prime numbers, which means they can only be divided by themselves and 1, and hence the name prime climb. And they're special, the ones in red, but we'll get back to why in a second. We also have prime numbers 2, 3, 5, and 7. You'll notice that they're not red, and I'll explain why that is momentarily as well. Now, 2, 3, 5, and 7 are the numbers that you see here, and these colors are repeated within these larger numbers. The reason why is these prime factors, these prime numbers are then shown later on in the game as being factors of larger numbers, which is pretty cool because it teaches you something about factors and how to factor larger numbers. So for example, we see this 40 is comprised of three yellows and a blue. That's three twos and a five. And that actually means that two times two times two times five is indeed 40. Likewise, we have another number up here, 88, and that you see is an 11 and then three twos. Well, guess what? Two times two times two, which is eight, times 11 is 88. So once again, you can see the prime factorization of 88 is represented with those colors and numbers. So the difference between the numbers in red and these other primary colors is that if you land on a space with a red number, a red prime, you're gonna get to draw a special card. Now, here's an example of what one of these cards looks like, right? You draw it over here. And it just kind of gives you a bonus. Like for example, if you move and you get this card, you can send a pawn of your choice to 64. That can be one of your pieces or one of your opponent's pieces, which is pretty cool. You also have another card like this, which is a roll again card. So that just means you get a second turn, which is also pretty cool. Now I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail right now about all the intricacies and rules of the game. I'm gonna actually play a sample game so you can get an idea and see firsthand what it's like to play this game. After we go through the general rules and the format and how to play this game, then we're gonna show you amazing footage from our first ever Scalar Learning Prime Climb tournament. So it was super cool. We just held it uh, very recently and it was a blast. The kids had a blast. So I'm gonna show you footage from that. We're gonna plan to do many more Prime Climb tournaments all across the Los Angeles area and maybe even beyond because I think this is such a phenomenal game and people need to learn it, understand it and play it. And you're gonna see a big growth in terms of both math understanding but also math love. So it's super, super cool. So in my board, I've created a bunch of these funny images for different pieces because I play virtually a lot with my students. But in an actual prime climb board, you get specific pawns that are your pieces that you're going to move around. We also have two die and they both go up to 10. So check this out. We're going to do a roll and we're going to see what happens. So there we start with a two and a four. So I'm going to show you how we can use arithmetic addition, subtraction, multiplication or division only in our repertoire here. So I could say plus two, and then I could say plus four, and I could move one of my guys to six. Again, the goal of the game is to get both players to 101. Alternatively, I could say plus two, and then multiply that four times my space and take me to eight. So I'll do that, that'll be my move. Again, I'm just playing solo without another competitor. So then if I go again, now I get an eight and a seven. So I can choose to apply both of those dice, to this one or to this one or to kind of split it. So check this out. I am going to, for the one at zero, I'm going to add eight and go here. And then I'm going to add seven and go to 15. Now you might be saying, well, wait a minute. I could have also taken that seven or that eight and multiplied against this guy's space. And that would have been true. That would have gotten me to either 56 or 64. The reason why I don't like going to those positions is because once I get to 56, I can't multiply anymore. Because even if I do two times 56, that's beyond 101. We're not allowed to go to beyond those numbers. So I like these positions right here. Now I'm going to roll again. And we got a six and a one. So what I'm going to do here is, again, I could add one, go to nine, maybe add six and go to 15. Uh, by the way, you can't be on the same spot as your other piece or another player's piece. You actually knock that person back to the start, back to zero. Okay. So those aren't viable options. But watch this. I got something really good here. I can multiply by six, six times 15 is 90, and then maybe add one and go to 91. But I have another option. 
I can also add one and go to 16 and then multiply six times 16 and that's 96. So you start to figure out very quickly, like there's different combinations and ways to play these numbers to get a maximum outcome. So that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna go to 96 and that's gonna be my move. All right, now we're gonna roll again. We're gonna go two and an eight, so check this out. I can't add eight here because that would go past 101. I could subtract, but even then I couldn't add eight. So I'm gonna look at this guy instead. So once again, I could multiply by eight, go to 64, maybe add two, go to 66. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna add two and go to 10. And then I'm gonna take my eight and multiply it by 10 and go to 80. Now, sometimes people ask, hey, can I multiply two times eight, 16, and add that to my piece? It's actually against the rules. You're not allowed to multiply the dice against each other. They multiply against your space. So I'm gonna say eight times 10, which is 80, and this one jumps all the way up here. All right, let's go again. So now I get a four and a three. I could move this one up by seven and go to 87, or I can do something interesting here. I can subtract three and I'm gonna add four. And that's gonna land me on 97, which is a prime number. And that means I get to choose a card. So I'm gonna draw a card and let's see what we got. Okay, so check this out. It says, whoops, there you go. If you are above 50, subtract 50. If you're below 50, add 50. Now, this is the double-edged sword of the prime climb cards. Sometimes they're good. I'd say most of the time they're good. And sometimes they're bad. And in this case, this is bad for me because I'm above 50. So I have to actually subtract 50. 97 minus 50 sends me back to 47. All right, so we're going to go again. And that's a rough spot to be in because really only thing I can multiply by is a 2 and go to 94. Or I'm going to have to add all the way up. So now I got a seven and a three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take them, add them together, or basically add them to my guy at 80. Seven plus three plus 80 is 90. All right, now we're gonna go again. I got a four and a 10. So I am going to, let's see, I'm gonna add 10 here. And you might be like, well, of course, let's just add four and go to 51. I actually don't wanna do that because if I go to 51, then I'm definitely, I cannot multiply even by two. So I'm gonna subtract four and I'm gonna get a prime, okay? So now I'm gonna draw a new prime for my card, and boom, I get a seven, and that says keeper at the top. So what does that mean, a keeper? And I'm gonna write seven up here to indicate that I can keep this card. Now, a keeper is something, I'm not allowed to play it on this term, but I can play it subsequently on another term, and this is a, it was add or subtract by seven. So at any point later in the game, if at the end of my turn or on top of my turn, I want to add or subtract by seven, I'm allowed to do that. And by the way, if you get multiple keepers, you can play multiple, two, even three, all on one turn. So it's pretty powerful when you kind of collect a bunch of keepers. Now I got a nine and a two. So this is a pretty sweet move because I can now double this. Thankfully, I can multiply and go to, uh, let's see, two times 43 would go to 86. So I'm going to go all the way up to 86. And then I'm gonna add nine and go to 95. All right, now I'm in a good spot here. Let's roll again. We got a one and a one. Okay, now this is another cool thing. Double ones or double anything. If you get doubles, you actually get four of those numbers. So not only do I get one one, I get four ones. So watch this, I can actually win really easily here. So I can go one, home, and I got three ones left. Now I'm going to minus one. Now technically I have two ones left but I'm not even gonna play them because now I'm on my last piece. I'm just trying to get to 101. So I'm not gonna play those, but I'm gonna play this keeper that's gonna come in handy. So I'm gonna add seven to 94, which takes me to 101. Boom, done. And that's how you play the game. Again, this is just one person playing, so I'm not having to deal with another person getting primes, attacking me, trying to knock me back to start. So. It gets a lot more interesting and a lot more fun when you're actually playing against somebody. But that's a general overarching statement of the rules, and I hope you check it out. Now we're going to go to footage of the most amazing Prime Climb tournament that we had recently with a bunch of my students that are based in Los Angeles. And we had a really cool first place prize of an Apple Watch. If you're ever in LA and you're interested in participating in our tournament next time we have one, which will probably be later this summer, just hit us up at tutoring at scalarlearning.com. We'd love to have you. Just We need some heads up and some notice. But that's it. Here we go. We're going to roll the footage, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you guys so much. Here we go. First of all, welcome to the first ever Scalar Learning Prime Climb Tournament. We actually, me and Sherilyn thought about doing this almost a year ago. Now, I hope this goes really well and I hope this is fun for everybody. And if it is, we're gonna do more of these, more of these. So for third place, we got a $50, or sorry, third place, we got a $25 Apple card, gift card. 
Uh, second place is a $50 gift card to Apple, all Apple stuff. I hope you like Apple stuff. And then Apple Watch, first place, okay? So the main thing is ad addition, subtraction, division, or multiplication, and trying to do it in unique combinations. Get both of the pieces to 101. Anytime you land on the red, what happens? Q? You, you get a prime, and primes can be either good or bad. Mostly good, but there are bad ones. All right, so I'm gonna go first, I'll be blue. I actually get four sevens. So what I can do is I can add seven. But you could, but, and you could yeah. also uh, yeah. multiply. Yes. If you want to go to 49. Exactly. And, and then yep. I get my other piece. Yep. Okay, you guys ready to go? Yeah. All right. What's that? I got paper and pencil downstairs for everybody. Yep. All right. Let's do it. So anyways, this was awesome. I had a blast and I can't believe like it kind of worked out on my timeline because I had no idea how it was actually gonna play out. Now, in third place was Carter. Congratulations. And this is, that's one of your first times playing, right? Yeah. yeah. So he picked it up really well and it was great. And then in our finals, we had such a battle. It was so interesting. So for second place for the $50 gift card, Sawyer, congratulations. Yeah. And in first place, Q. Congratulations. Yeah! <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it.